I'm Nick Fury. Even when I'm out, I'm in. After enduring the cataclysmic collapse of the MCU over the past few years, it's safe to say my expectations for Secret Invasion were pretty low. I wasn't even going to make a video about it, but there was a scene in the final episode of Secret Invasion that was so disappointing, so monumentally stupid that I felt compelled to write this essay. Hi, I'm Bong Bardo and I'm a recovering Marvel addict. For some context, the first time I saw Samuel Jackson show up as Nick Fury at the end of Iron Man 1, I was sold. I love Samuel Jackson. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. I'd argue that the reason the MCU blew up and every other attempt at building a cinematic universe failed miserably was because none of the other universes had a character with the charisma of Nick Fury that could be the link the bridge between worlds that made the MCU feel so cohesive Nick Fury was at his best leading other heroes into battle from the shadows but he could hold his own remember when he mowed down like 12 guys with a gatling gun before bamboozling his way into the sewers with a plasma cutter to escape the winter soldier he may not have had any powers but he was extremely competent at his job but in secret invasion they did fury dirty go back to your space station You're in no shape for this fight that lies before us. You're not ready for this, Fury. I've known you would this. Thank you, Dr. Reins. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. They also didn't show how he ended up like this. So I have no idea why Nick Fury is suddenly an elderly man that's fallen and can't get up. But here's the kicker. This show could have worked. It should have worked. It's about shape-shifting reptilian aliens trying to start a nuclear war between Russia and the US. Something that happens to be kind of relevant these days. The QAnon fans alone should have been enough to make this Marvel's most popular show ever. But instead, Marvel took a slam dunk and whiffed hard. And I think it's a lesson to all writers and filmmakers out there. When you write a character whose main appeal is that he's an enigmatic highly competent protagonist don't take that away from them describe what nick fury looks like he's black on he's bald does he look like a bitch because when you nerf a character's competence hoping to explore who he is as a person or whatever you might find that there's not much to the character beneath the surface do i care about nick fury's love life hell no I want to see him ordering Tony Stark around, doing spy shit, being a badass. Instead, in Secret Invasion, Nick Fury gets jumped by a couple of goons and can't do anything about it. Twice. It's fucking pathetic. We see him fail to shoot a bad guy who's holding a bloody detonator, even though he's only 10 feet away. 5 seconds later, he sees the same bad guy again, a bad guy who's just killed a thousand innocent people. And and shot his most loyal ally but he still can't take the shot cuz there's like people in the way you know oh no that's just episode 1 by the way and it's all downhill from there fury threatens to shoot a guy's son to save his friend but then doesn't think of threatening the guy's son when they're trying to stop a nuclear launch later fury confronts rodi knowing that rodi has been replaced by a skrull shapeshifter but he never thinks to just execute him They then try to stop the Skrulls from assassinating the president, but Fury does basically nothing and lets his friend get shot. Fatality. Also, this bad guy had a perfect flank on Fury and his military friends. Does he not realize he can just flip the AR in his hands to full auto and literally just mow them all down? Instead, he takes a single shot and then ducks into cover for no reason. But that's all standard Marvel bullshit. The cherry on this shit cake was the climactic scene. Fury finally confronts the bad guy. In the scene, Fury says the last emotion he felt as he flaked away during the blip was relief. Relief. But I call bullshit because I remember that scene. Well done. Does that sound like relief to you? Anyway, back in the final confrontation, Nick Fury has got an ace up his sleeve. As Nick Fury should. He's got some magic juice that gives him the powers of 
all the Avengers. Awesome, I was finally in. But not two seconds after the fight begins, it turns out it's not Fury at all. It's Amelia Clarke, the most forgettable character in the show. For some reason, Fury gave Amelia Clarke the magic juice instead of just, I don't know, taking it himself? Why? I'm seriously asking why? Why would Nick Fury, one of the most paranoid, secretive motherfuckers on the planet, hand over absolute power to a girl he barely knows? Simple. He wouldn't. Only bad writers would. Now you might be thinking, hey Bombardo, obviously only a Skrull could have taken the DNA out of the magic juice. And my point is, it's magic juice. Just let Fury have this one thing. Since when has Marvel given a shit about the consistency of its magic systems? The end result is that Nick Fury is basically redundant in his own show. Great job, you hacks. I could go on and on about how boring the show was, how terrible the dialogue is. Not to mention Fury's Skrull wife. Oh, come on! But frankly, that final scene broke my brain and I just can't do it anymore. Anyway, I appreciate you making my suffering worthwhile by watching this video. Cheers. I'll see you in the next one.